I'm working here as a project manager uh, and uh, uh, managing a couple of the projects for Noldris. So uh, today uh, we'll be discussing, you know, how to uh, what what is the role of communication in project and to understand, you know, how to do it effectively. Whole session is divided into two parts. Okay, and uh, uh, you know one part will be covered this week, and the next part uh, will be uh, you know next week because you know I feel you know this session. Uh, uh, I mean, forty five minutes is not enough for, to cover this session. So um, let's uh, without wasting time, let's you know. Um, Jump on, jump on to uh, the intro of communication. So yeah, uh, we all know, you know, uh, uh, communication is a spine of project success. I mean, we all hear that, okay. But you know, still, still, uh, you know, uh, project fails, uh, and and the and the very top reason sometimes is the bad communication, okay. So let's understand, you know, what exactly. Let's understand the stats. Let's understand, you know, what exactly the communication is. And let's understand the process that is associated with the communication. So, normally, you know, when when it comes to communication, we often, uh, uh, you know, uh, regard it as a, as a, you know, as uh, as a management. I mean, it it is a part of management strategy, and it, it has to be happen. But uh, but without uh, without a proper communication strategy or without a proper uh, you know decision on you know what tools need to be used for the for the seamless communication, it could lead us to uh, a failure. So. Uh, at that, at that, I mean, this is the this is the area that we should be focusing on uh, on this session. You know, how to do the communication effectively. So before uh, jumping onto what is communication and what is communication pro process, let's you know focus on the status. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's uh, focus on some stats actually. Okay, uh, just a second. So this is, uh, uh, I mean. This is a market study, you know. Uh, I mean, there is a market study, you know. Uh, I I uh, I got some numbers from the market, so it says that you know it is it is a study that is uh, that is done by PMI, uh, the Project Management Institute. So according to Project Management Institute, there are top ten reasons for the project failure. I mean, they have conducted a study where you know they have identified top ten reasons for the project uh, project failure, and what the top number, the 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 uh, the poor communication is the uh, the, the very number uh, reason for the you know, the very number one reason for the uh, you know project failure that's that's actually a worrying fact and the and one out of five projects you know, one out of five project actually suffers from a communication failure okay so that's that's again a serious issue and uh, there is an individual study uh, you know done by a very famous consultancy firm Bain and Co so they come up with this figure that uh, companies actually risk you know uh, over 135 million dollar okay for every 1 billion dollar spent on a project so they actually have this uh, risk capping you know capital uh, allocated uh, for a, for every project that is 135 million dollar out of that 135 million dollar okay 75 million dollar only put at risk by ineffective communication so this is actually fact. I mean, th these are these are not my, you know my words. These are there in the market study. You can uh, visit PMI's articles. You can visit you know uh, Bain and Co's website, and they, you can read it in their website. These are actually this actually happens. I mean this. I mean there is no improvement in it. Trust me. This these are the figures that is done. Uh, you know uh, that is uh, uh, that is done uh, that is actually retrieved from two 2021 article. Okay, so. Before getting into this, you know, uh, why? I mean, why actually we we actually deals with a lot of uh, poor communication words and poor. Why we uh, you know uh, deal with a lot of issues like poor communication, uh, or or gapping in understanding. Why we face such issues? Before you know getting before jumping onto that part, let's you know understand actually what is communication. And before jumping into communication, to understand the concept of communication, let's you know. Uh, 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 let let me walk you through with uh, with the agenda of this session. So, uh, the whole session is divided into three parts. One, we will be understanding the communication. Where we where we will be discussing uh, the communication, the word communication, and the communication process. And uh, the the second is uh, we'll be discussing the skills that is needed. Uh, uh, you know that is needed uh, uh, to have a better communication at workplace or to have a uh, uh, or or one that need, uh, you know the uh, 
uh, you know the skills that one need to uh, you know cultivate in in, uh, in themselves to have a better communication so uh, we'll be you know walking i'll be walking you through uh, with the seven c's of communication and then the the last part is you know effective method that we should be uh, or the essential method that we should be using you know while communicating uh, i mean when to use uh, emails when to use uh, you know uh, uh, video conference and when to use you know uh, google chats or one on one chats or slack chats so all that uh, all that you know uh, you know methods we'll be discussing on the uh, you know uh, under you know effective methods of communication so uh, let's start with uh, the very first point which is understanding communication okay so uh, understanding communication so to to understand any stuff you know uh, i i would uh, you know my my uh, uh, my suggestion would be to you know just uh, first understand you know the definition of that particular particular word okay what communication is okay and then you know just break down the the definition to understand further you know what exactly it means so let's uh, you know let's uh, uh, dive into uh, you know dive in the definition so definition of communication as provided by the merriam webster uh, that's a popular you know dictionary out there or or the uh, or the uh, the de definition uh, you know the the website that gives the definition for particular uh, words so according to merriam webster communication is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols signs or behavior simple okay this is very simple so it's simple to understand. It's a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols, signs, or behavior, right? Very easy. But what is that process? It is highlighted there. What is that process? You know, how this process works, or, uh, you know, how in this process individuals should be uh, exchanging the information. This is why, this is what we need to understand. What is this process? Okay, so our next, Session, uh, you know, next uh, discussion would be about this process. We call this process as communication process. So we need to understand how in this communication process, an individual can send information to another individual and another individual can even respond to that particular information uh, based on that particular information that he has received. So there are many objects, I would say, let's say objects are there. Or the, uh, there are many contexts are there in this process. Let's understand it one by one. So you can see there is uh, uh, we call uh, a source. Uh, we we have a source. The source uh, uh, we call uh, we can sometimes call it as sender. So sender is uh, someone, or it, it can be any entity who is sending the message, and actually you know starting the communication process or initiating the communication process. So sender is responsible for initiating the com communication process and there is a con uh, you know there is an entity message so message uh, in the whole communication the whole communication process is about you know sending this message across uh, you know across i mean throughout the process okay so so message is like a uh, it's it's like a uh, any idea or information or primary idea that uh, you need to you know send it across uh, you know send it to uh, send it to receive so Encoding, you can see encoding. Encoding is uh, is you know uh, where your main message uh, you know uh, is drafted in such a way that your receiver end or the person whom you are sending that particular message should be able to understand it. So encoding is where the process of formatting of that particular information happens. So this is a process where uh, you draft anything in so that your receiver could understand it properly and then comes the channel channel is uh, chan uh, you know channel is a medium through where you send that particular message it could be uh, it could be email it could be uh, video, you know video conference it could be phone conference it could be one on one uh, uh, you know uh, you know uh, one on one messaging or, or or personal messaging you can the so channel can be medium where where this encoded message uh, can be sent through to receiver okay and the noise will come to noise later uh you know after you know discussing decoding and uh receiver so decoding is the process okay is a process in which uh you know where the uh, receiver actually interprets a message so this is the process where you know this is a process where receiver actually try to understand what is actually drafted as uh, you know during the encoding process 
Okay, so decoding is a process where you know receiver try to uh, uh, you know interpret the message that has been sent by the sender, and uh, receiver is the person the, who accept the message that has been sent by the sender and decodes and respond uh, to that particular message, uh, you know, properly. And once uh, he is cleared with the message, he will you know send a feedback or uh, uh, send a feedback as a response to the sender. Now, in all this communication process, there is a noise. Okay, so noise is a kind of disturbance. Okay, that could happen in three levels: one at encoding level, second the channel, and third at the decoding level. So this noise is an entity which could actually hamper the drafting of a message, or it could actually hamper the decoding of the message, or uh, so which could actually affect the uh, sender or receiver. To send or receive that particular. So, if a sender is drafting a message and uh, he's not, uh, you know, he has not you know, encoded it very well, obviously that is a kind of noise. Okay. If there is a, uh, if there is a, uh, you know, message he's actually, uh, you know, he's, he's trying to communicate to the sender through a you know, phone call and there is a disturbance in the phone call. So, that is a kind of noise which is actually affecting the uh, encoded message. So, so noise is any disturbance that is happening. Uh, in this communication process, so it could happen at any end, encoding end, decoding end, or or at the channel. Okay, so I hope uh, you have understood the communication process very well. Okay, so whenever you communicate, this visual, uh, you know, this visual process should be in your mind. You know, when you draft a mail, when you uh, when you draft a message to, to your sender, you need to make sure that you know what context you need to use so that you know your receiver could be able to easily decode it okay so this is the communication process uh, that we need to keep in mind while uh, communicating with each other now we understood the communication process that's good now let's uh, let's take an example i mean this it's a, it's a very funny example okay so the communication app is happening on, over a date night okay our purse uh, i mean there is a girl and uh, she said something, your food smell delicious. And there's a boy. He said, uh, okay, thanks. Uh, so that was the message that girl want to, you know, send it to the uh, boy and boy is at the receiver end. How he gonna implement, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, interpret it. So he, he thought, okay, thanks, but actually she wants to take a bite. So that is the interpretation that he had to take, but he just gave the feedback. Thanks. So the, this is hap this is hap the, uh, you know, the issue happened at the decoding end where, uh, obviously it happens at the encoding end because, you know, the sender was not clear about, you know, what exactly, uh, you know, I meant by, by just drafting it, your food smell delicious. I want to take a bite. That's it. Uh, she would, she would have, you know, drafted a message like this. So the receiver would have, you know, taken it properly and would have, you know, uh, would have a great feedback, like, okay, take a bite. Would you like to have a bite for it? Okay. So this, this kind of issue, uh, I mean, these kind of, you know, uh, you know, issue happens when you, we do don't have understanding about the communication process. And this actually hampers our daily communications as well, where we are, uh, where, where we have to. Or deliver a message to someone about a task that uh, about about a blocker or about about uh, about a requirement of an asset uh, that is required in a particular task uh, to get. I mean, in order to complete that task, we uh, uh, if there is any kind of requirement, we would be needing. So the message that you deliver that has to be very concrete, that has to be very clear, in order for your respond, uh, in, in order for your receiver and to understand it, to decode it, and to give your feedback properly. Okay, so that's a very uh, short uh, example. Uh, before uh, going ahead uh, with, uh, okay, we understood that that's a communication process. Okay, now how to how to make this? Uh, what are the skills that we need to you know cultivate to uh, to make sure that whatever we draft has to be clear, has to be uh, very much concrete, so that a responder can understand it. And can uh, you know uh, respond to that particular message with the proper feedback? What we should be doing? So that that where seven C's of communication comes in. Okay. Uh, before discussing seven C's of communication, let's actually go through uh, a very funny video. Okay. 
where uh, where it actually showcases you know why communication is very much important uh, in our daily life as well okay okay so let me know when you guys hear audio from this uh, video uh, can you hear the video oh, can can you hear the audio not yet now no Yes. It's strange. Can you not hear it? Yes, yes, we can now. Uh, no, uh, Amit, it's not uh, clearly audible. We can only hear the bits and pieces. Okay, I'm not sure you know how to share the computer audio. Okay. Studio. Uh, I'm not sure about it. Can uh, I mean we can skip this uh, slide? I mean it's a very funny slide. I can share the video individually. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Uh, so before discussing seven C's of communication, uh, there is a very uh, nice quote, uh, you know, made by George Bernard Shaw. He's a very famous Irish playwright, uh, and he's he's the first per you know he's the first person who actually uh, you know. Uh, started the you know started writing for uh, st started writing comedy drama script so he wrote this part you know some uh, 150 years ago that the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place that's right so uh, too often in our uh, you know personal or professional lives you know miscommunication happens yeah we know that you know it often lead to many disaster as well okay but uh, it is clear that you know uh, when uh, I'm I'm into I'm into management for so long. You know I used to uh, hear this. I know, you know I thought, you no. Know, uh, I mean, or I assume uh, that you know you would have uh, you would have give, responded to this message in such a way. But if the message is not clear, how would I know that you know you meant that? I mean, you you required that particular thing from me. So that kind of communication happens a lot in my career. Okay, so. So that's the single big uh, biggest problem that uh, you know it's the illusion that it has taken place. So we, whenever we communicate, we have to make sure that uh, the message has been drafted properly and the message has been sent to the receiver and to make sure that receiver has understood it or un understood it or not. So uh, before uh, okay, uh, in order to do that, uh, we would need to understand you know what are the skills or what are the what are that important. Uh, factors that we need to consider while you know drafting a message, uh, so that you know our uh, receiver could respond it uh, properly. Okay, so that uh, will take us to uh, seven C's of communication. Seven C's. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be not uh, walking through uh, it by you know understanding the definition. I'll be you know giving you an example. For uh, you know, at each uh, uh, you know, sees uh, uh, you know when when we when we go through at each sees, we will will be you know uh, uh, going through an example. So these are the seven C's, starting with clear, correct, complete, concise, concrete, courteous, and coherent. Okay, so these are actually skills that a person should have while drafting or uh, or while creating an idea that need to be sent over or through a 
communication process. Okay. So uh, let's understand what is clear. Okay. So clear as, as name suggests clarity. Okay. So any message needs to, uh, you know, needs to come out clearly, uh, you know, from your uh, communication rather than, you know, recipient having to, uh, you know, recipient you know, struggling with or assuming things that, you know, what he is trying to uh, say or what he is trying to, you know, uh, draft in a, in an email or in a message. So it has to be very much clear. Okay. So, uh, and, and in, when, when you are actually, uh, uh, making sure of this particular C, it is very important to, uh, know that you do not over communicate in this C clear means you are on the point. You are not expanding the mails or is not expanding the message so that, you know, your responders or your, uh, or receiver end will get, you know, will get confused. So, uh, let's take an example. So there is a message, uh, there is a mail. So dear James, I would like to talk to you about the new clients project, which the engineering team had discussed yesterday. I might need the help of John from your team regards Kevin. So that's very normal mail, right? Okay, there is nothing. Uh, I, I don't think there is any problem with that. Mail. But there are some some things you know that are wrong in this mail. I'll tell you what. Uh, see, Kevin actually, uh, Kevin actually, you know, requesting. I would like to talk to you about the new clients project with the engineering team had discussed yesterday. I might need the help of John from your team. So there are possible, uh, you know, James might not even know who the new client is, or what the project is about. He probably, uh, you know, was not part of the meeting with the engineering team. Okay. Or, uh, furthermore, there might be more than, uh, you know, one John in, uh, James team. So this particular message could have, uh, those details that, uh, that would help James to, you know, uh, respond him with a proper input. Okay. So how, uh, we can actually draft it better as per the, the clear, uh, I mean, the clear, uh, after considering the clear part of the communication. So this could have been, uh, drafted like this. As you may know, we have, a, we have signed up, uh, S Y Z as our new client. I had a meeting with the engineering team yesterday and had discussed the campaign requirement for this project. John Redden from your team had done a pretty good job last time doing the social media campaign for ABC. And so would look like, I would like him to work on the XYZ campaign. So would you be available sometime tomorrow to discuss this further? So there are details like the project, the client and which person he is requesting would like, uh, him to have him to join that particular project. And also he actually mentioned the time as well. When, uh, uh, you know, he would, uh, he would, uh, he would want to, you know, talk to him. So these are the factors that we need to keep in mind while, uh, while implement, while implementing the clear concept of seven C's of communication. So I hope you all are clear, clear about, uh, I hope you all, uh, understood that, uh, this concept, the clear, uh, uh, the clear, uh, principle of communication, I would say. So the second thing is correct. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so suppose, uh, we, we actually, uh, uh, we draft a lot of emails in a day, right? Uh, uh, we draft a lot of emails. We draft a lot of messages. We draft a lot of documents as well. So people actually tend to type fast and therefore, you know, making spelling mistakes. So, spe you know, spell checks will not be able to catch if it, uh, if the wrong spell word is in fact, another, another word in the English language. So that is, that is a normal thing nowadays. So what we need to do is, so whenever you draft any message, you need to make sure that there is no spelling mistake. It has to be, uh, that, 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 that's a very priority thing. You know, you, uh, you have to make sure that there is no spelling mistake. Also, you need to make sure that, uh, something you've written in one language shouldn't be meaning, uh, shouldn't be, you know, uh, should, should have a different meaning in different language. Okay. So that need to be made sure so that. Uh, how you can make sure uh, by understanding, you know, what kind of, you know, responder uh, there at the receiver end, uh, uh, you know, uh, who, who will be, you know, reading your uh, drafted email. So, uh, you know, to understand that particular responder and need to have a, uh, you know, correct em email drafted uh, uh, as per, as per that responder. So I would suggest, you know, 
uh, whenever you draft an email, make sure have an uh, you know have Grammarly installed, and also don't draft an email directly onto uh, onto onto Gmail. You open a document, draft it there, just then and you no know, copy and paste uh, the emails. Uh, just copy and uh, copy and paste the you know drafted uh, uh, drafted not in the email. Okay, so for example, I mean there is an example here. Dear David, further to our conversation today, I'm attaching the plan for the first stage of the project. Hope the one week deadline is okay with you and your team. So, is there any issue in this uh, in this email? Uh, you, you guys can you know uh, turn off uh, turn on your uh, audio and say. I think the message is not clear that what is the plan is. Okay, we are, we are talking about correct actually. So it's pretty much clear actually. I mean, for the two hour conversation, I'm attaching a plan for the first stage of the project. Of the one week deadline is okay with you and your team. Uh, week spelling is wrong. Yeah, exactly. And it's conversation, not conservation. Okay. So, I mean, these are actually, I'm, I'm, I know you, you people might have, uh, might have this, man, these are actually silly, uh, you know, silly mistakes. We would not be making this, but this happens. This happens for sure. This happens because, uh, conservation is actually correct there. Okay. Conservation is actually correct there and your spell check will, you know, uh, will omit this particular part, but Grammarly will not do that because Grammarly actually reads, uh, Grammarly has that AI, which actually reads the whole sentence. So it is very important. I mean, to, to, to make sure that whatever email you're drafting, it has to be drafted in a document, install a Grammarly, uh, you know, that could, that could, uh, analyze your document that could analyze either Google doc or, or WinWord. Okay. And after, you know, Grammarly, uh, after all the suggestions that Grammarly gave, you know, after you make sure that, you know, all the suggestions have been implemented, then only, you know, you copy that, uh, uh drafted note to the email. Actually, this is a very grave issue because you are actually representing uh, the organization when you draft these kind of emails and sending it to to client. Uh, I mean, these are these are actually grave mistakes. So there comes the correct part where we make sure whatever we are drafting, it is clear, not only clear, it, it has to be corrected. Every sentence has to be corrected so that your responder should should get that feeling. Okay. That person is actually serious about, uh, not only, uh, not only, not only about, uh, the email, it, he's actually serious about my project as well. Okay. <clears throat> complete. So, uh, so complete message means a message should have everything, everything. Okay. According to me, if you are, if there is a, uh, there is a, uh, task, you know, uh, shared by a client. And, uh, you know, you, you think that, you know, there is some missing, uh, there is some missing information in the task. And, uh, there are some couple of information that you would require from, uh, you know, uh, from, from the trail of people, uh, for the task. Uh, how would you communicate it with client? Obviously you'll be drafting a message to him, but it's important that that message has to be very, very much complete. It shouldn't be, you know, taking you to a mail loop or to a comment loop. Mail loop and comment loop are the situation where you are actually, you know, in a loop where you are talking, uh, you're, 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 uh, you're talking about the requirement. You are talking about your needs, which you require for a particular task in a series of emails or in a series of comments, you would have, you know, uh, you know, uh, said that in a, in a very first comment that, you know, these are the information. These are the complete information I would be needing. And these, these, these are the things. So. Do the brainstorming if, uh, if it requires, for example, if there is a person who, uh, if, if a client, you know, comes in with the task and ask you that, uh, I would be, I would be, uh, you know, I would like to make a, I would like to send an email, uh, email blast to, you know, my hundred, uh, customers. And this is the email template that you need to follow. And, uh, I mean, I mean they, there is a kind of information that you would be needing. Uh, where is the PSD file for that? Okay. He sent the PSD file. Now, uh, you would be asking, okay, uh, how, how, uh, what are the, uh, you know, user ID I'll be, I would be sending. 
so he'll be sending you another user id so these are these are the generic things that you would have you know asked in a single comment rather than you no know, asking on every uh, you know rather than you no know, asking on a on a comment loop uh, ask it uh, ask it uh, ask it at the very first time so whenever you draft an email just make sure or draft a message just make sure uh, that message and that email is complete okay you shouldn't be getting into a into a email loop or uh, or comment loop doing a back and forth communication or not okay so it is very important so let's take an example hi all let us meet tomorrow to discuss the product launch event please be there on time this is not complete actually so what is missing let us meet tomorrow to discuss the product launch let's be there on time time what is time schedule yeah. schedule yes. time and location that's 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 a simple thing i mean where we are meeting either we are meeting uh, uh, through uh, a meet link or where we are meeting or 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 some room okay at least we should be uh, specifying the location okay so here is the correct example hi all let us meet tomorrow at 11 am okay at conference room 3 to discuss the product launch event we will have to decide the keynote speakers and complete the event in in wide draft tomorrow please be there on time so that is agenda okay that's great now concise concise and concrete both are different actually concise means uh, if if uh, your message shouldn't be very long okay it should be to the point okay you should shouldn't be uh, you know uh, drafting a story of items in, you know in order to uh, in order to you know specify a task or in order to draft a task don't draft a story just what you need just to the uh, i mean if if there is a if there is a requirement you you would be asking from the client just make the point that's it you shouldn't be you no know, drafting a story so concise means that uh, if it doesn't mean that you you have to be you know uh, shorten the things no it means if it is a need uh, uh, if if there is a need that you know okay the things can be you know said uh, said in a two sent you know in a two sentence uh, message just make it uh, make sure that you know we we should you know concise it we should be uh, making it to the point uh, for a particular message so so obviously uh, uh, don't make a story and it has to be uh the, your message has to be to the point uh you know so that responder could read it and read it in a timely manner and respond it in a timely manner or he would be you know he would be doing uh what okay uh okay this is a very lengthy message i would be you know uh responding it to it by my end of the day so that would actually delays the process of uh you know getting the feedback to you okay so 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 the i as as per the concise principle we shouldn't be wasting the time of sender and the receiver while drafting a message uh, via email uh, while drafting a message which is uh, which is going, going to be sent via email or 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 one one chats okay so in uh, let's take an example so there is a <clears throat> there's a message i mean it's a valid uh, uh, drafted email i want to talk about the video editing ideas we sort of planned out the other day don't you think it would make a lot of sense to also add additional elements to the videos i mean i think that uh, that would sort of improve the quality of the videos as well as have a stronger impact on the client's message for instance we could add a dissolve transition to each movie which would then give it a seamless flow this would then make the see i i'm not making Uh, it's boring. It's actually getting boring. Okay, I'm just reading it through. That's it. Okay, this would then make the video cleaner and be more appealing in the minds of the people. The impact would just be a lot greater. This makes a lot more sense, according to me. What do you think? So there is a. See, first of all, there is a lot of repetition in this message. A lot of and the and it is actually quite long. Okay, and and the and and this context, like I mean, I think, if you're not sure about it, don't draft it. okay just if you want to put a suggestion have a very single line okay for asking a suggestion what do you think about this okay this is actually lengthy mail i mean a bad example uh, for a concise let's 
the same thing where you know the user uh, wants to draft a message where he wants to share uh, uh, a video editing ideas that uh, that they have planned out and they he wants to share some of his ideas through a mail. So he just uh, drafted it like this. I wanted to discuss the video editing ideas uh, we planned out yesterday. It would be better to add additional elements to the video in order to have a stronger impact on the client's message. So that is getting rid of I mean and I think. So he has drafted what uh, it think is the best and uh, asked for the suggestion. A dissolve transition would give a seamless flow to each movie and make the videos clean and appealing in the minds of the target. What do you think? That's it. End of the story. Then they can connect it. They can connect over it and then uh, they can make a decision. That's it. We shouldn't be making our emails lengthy. It, it, it is actually quite long. I mean, so that, you know, your responder should get enough time to respond to it or else he would, uh, he would either, he would uh, respond it uh, with a, uh, uh, you know, uh, with a, with the incomplete information or you will not get a timely response from him. Okay. <clears throat> concrete. So, uh, concrete messages or concrete uh, drafts are actually clear and uh, usually they are, they are actually supported with facts. So it, it gives, get, it gives you actually, uh, you know, uh, very laser focus, you know, concept on the uh, very laser focus, uh, 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 you know, thing on the, on the, on the message or laser focus uh, thing on the context. Okay. Uh, rest of the things are actually, uh, I mean, it, it actually, if, if you're talking about a phone, it just, you know, just talk about the display, uh, uh and, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, the peripherals it has, or if they, if they, uh, and, and what is what is the size of the RAM? What is the size of the, uh, you know, what, what is the space it has? So that's it. That, that is the, that is the concrete, uh, you know, information that we should be focusing on, you know, while drafting the me message and while drafting the email. So. Normally, this concrete concept is being uh, is used by advertising agencies. So we can get a lot of good example when we you know look at uh, look uh, look at the branding industry. So, uh, for example, uh, here there is a message: save time with the indicator master every day. So we know that's a tagline of a uh, you know of a product. But we don't know, you know, what this product does and what is that product, uh, you know, what what exactly that product uh, product do, and how it's gonna help the people. What is it actually? Is it is it uh, is it a software or is it a, a kind of you know hardware device? We don't we don't know. So that's a very bad example of concrete. Yeah, it is short. That doesn't mean it is concrete. Concrete means you have to be very pre uh, you know very precise precise about the information. So. Have you ever been late for a meeting just because you didn't uh, know the train schedule? Hate waiting for a bus because you don't know its timings. Then download the Indicator Master app. It will give you all the train and bus schedules so that you can avoid delays and save time. This is very much concrete, right? It says about that Indicator Master app. It, it says about that particular application, right? So that's concrete. So we need to be clear with our message. Plus, we need to support the message with some facts, okay? So that we should be very much precise about the information. So that's concrete. Now, courteous. Actually, this is the very important principle of uh, of communication. Courteous, and, and we all should be should be you know. Uh, we have faced in one of our, uh, you know, in my, we we have faced a situation. Mean, we 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 have been in a situation while drafting an email where uh, we sometimes we put uh, aggression on uh, you know onto that email where we while drafting while drafting it and we we might have you know said some uh, bad words or some bad uh, you know bad bad, bad context to that responder. But uh, courteous, you know, what does courteous say is, is uh, courteous means, you know, be polite and be humble with everyone, with your peers, with your uh, team members, with your reporting managers. So when you draft an email, everybody is equal. Okay. Everybody uh, is, uh, is actually, uh, I mean, is the people who are, who you are working with or who you are working for. 
so always be humble and be polite while drafting an email okay so it is an import it is a profound importance trust me it is very much important when you are working in a corporate setting or uh, when you're working with you know uh, individual with uh, with you know uh, with uh, a different stuck you know individual with uh, who are deployed at different structure okay so uh, when you draft an email how how courteous should uh, look like so for example i mean there is a bad example i really do not appreciate how your it team ignores a request of my team alone my team is an important function in this organization too and we have our own it requirement can you ensure that your team responds prom promptly to my team's request here on so uh, this email actually is a little dis uh, disrespectful because drew maybe the in charge of that uh, it team uh, might be he's busy in some something else he might have you know overlooked this email or his request but uh, the way you, uh, you know stanley or the person is drafting an email is actually judgmental and disrespectful so now now the person drew uh, might now order his team to not respond to any any of the stanley's email because you know ego clash can happen so when you draft an email always be humble always be humble it's not about your client it's not about uh, you know uh, you, uh, uh, your reporting manager is about everyone if you're working with your peers if you want to communicate some escalation be polite be humble okay you shouldn't be you know putting on putting your aggression in front of your ego and showing it to everyone that you know yeah i'm serious about this project because my mail says so so the example good example how he would have written it i understand that it team is swamped with work and gets requests from every department in the organization my team however is working on a high priority project and i would greatly appreciate if you could ask your team members to respond to my team's queries promptly and help us complete this project on time please do let me know if you need anything from me anything from me so that's the uh, you know go, very good example of uh, a polite request so now it is likely that drew will uh, drew will uh, okay now the, he, he uh, drew will you know feel that now stanley comes uh, comes a priority he's actually showing the humbleness yeah i'm i'm actually you know uh, i've i've delayed his work maybe this is the time you know i should prioritize uh, his request so that kind of you know uh, see obviously uh, whatever you draft in an email actually that shows you know what you're feeling at that particular point of time so drew will get that feeling and drew will you know obviously will make the, we will respond to that action as per your you know uh, as per your encoded message so that's courteous the last uh, is coherent coherent principle so coherent says that whatever you are drafting whatever message you are drafting it should have a logical flow okay uh, so for example if uh, if they if in your message there is something that uh, referred to uh, any conversation that has previously happened you have to mention that you have to link it so that the person who you are sending to should get uh, should get that information okay this communication might have happened which he is referring to or is there any task that he is referring to that uh, that he would like me to uh, to look at should ha should be mentioned in this particular email he shouldn't be you know you shouldn't be telling him to you know okay we had a, confirm a confirmation or i had shared you a uh, shared you a document at that particular time okay go and you know visit that document no that's not a that's not a right approach you have to close that communication right that's your main agenda okay so, so sound your you know you have to you know add that logical flow sound in your message where you you will be putting all that information that is required to close that particular information or that particular conversation or that particular communication process okay so uh, so there's a there is an example thanks for submitting the industry report finn will give you some uh, feedback on it finn also wanted to find out if you will be available for the client meeting tomorrow we'll be discussing the budget for the next phase uh, of the project so in the in this email so it was supposed to be about the about some report right industry report which was uh, submitted and uh, and the uh, and and uh, you know uh, i think i think uh, shirley is uh, requesting feedback for it okay so the question about the meeting 
had come out of nowhere and will now distract uh, the person, the NAM, uh, and her priorities because we will be discussing the budget for the next phase of the project. Finn also wanted to find out if you will be available for the client meeting tomorrow. So that's the question. Okay, question about the meeting. So I'm meeting about what? Okay, so that's actually a different context. So if there's if it's a different context, let's take it in a different email. Okay, if it is a context which is related to this only, explain it. This is explain it to the uh, to the uh, responder. So the, in the good example, the right example, I would say, thanks for submitting the industry report. Finn will give you some feedback on it. You'll be receiving an email from uh, him with detailed comments. So nothing about the meeting. So if if it is a meeting about something else, take it out of the email and draft another email or send an email uh, meeting request to him. Uh, you know, providing a proper agenda. So that's all about coherent. Coherent is all about have a logical flow apply to your message. Okay, so I think uh, it's time to wrap up uh, this part of the session. Part one. We'll be meeting next week to discuss the effective communication methods in the project. So, what are those communication methods that? Uh, I mean, how the communication method, I mean, which communication method at what instance we should be using. We'll be discussing that more in our uh, coming week. In our next knowledge session. Thank you. So, uh, if we have time, we can, uh, we can have the Q a session. Uh, actually, we are 5 minutes over, but uh, we can have quick questions or you can reach out uh, with your questions to Amit directly. Thank you all for joining. So, thank you so much, Amit, and thanks, Prachi. This has been a wonderful, wonderful session. And thanks, everyone, for coming over to this platform. And uh, I wish you a great, great learning day ahead. Keep learning and keep winning, everyone. And we see each other again next week. So, thanks a lot. Have a good day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.